potential of minus 0 to t. I mean, this is, this is almost like, you know, the analysis lemma that we did actually in, in our previous discussion actually. Okay? And we applied it, we kind of found out the long term behavior actually. Okay. So y of t um, exponential of 0 to t, theta of tau d tau, okay, less than or equal to a of t less than or equal to, if this is for a of t and exponential of 0 to t minus 0 to t, so this is also minus, also minus here, theta of tau d tau, so if I have an inequality of this form, okay, certainly I can put this inequality in such kind of a form actually, it's not a big deal, I, I just need to multiply what you call the integrating factor from the both sides and you know, you remember the proof that we did uh, for the lemma previously, okay, in, in our first discussion actually, the crucial lemma which allowed us to, um, which kind of allowed us to, to study the long term behavior of reaction diffusion equation actually. So it's a similar kind of a calculation, okay? So you can put such an inequality in such a form, and once you have such a form, then this inequality, if this is true, then this is also true. So y of t can be estimated, so if this is true, then this is true. y of t can be put as uh, y of 0, okay? Exponential of uh, um, 0 to t theta of tau d tau okay and plus 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 0 to t a of s times the exponential factor that goes like uh, s to t Okay, S to T and theta of tau D tau. Okay. And what I'm saying, and obviously ds. Finally, can get ds. So I'm saying I can put this inequality in such a form, and once I can put this inequality in such a form, I can write this inequality. So 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 if I have a y that satisfies this inequality, which is indeed our case, then, you know, then the y can be estimated purely in the terms of the a and the theta is actually independent of the y. So, so y of t can be estimated by such kind of an expression. Okay. So this is really one of the versions of the Grunewald lemma. So what I need to do now, I need to, in this, in this inequality, so I'm assuming that this inequality is valid for our case. I'm going to substitute y of t, a of t, and theta of t, and I'm going to get what? So I'm going to get an inequality that looks like this. that looks like best. You have to keep focus that what we are doing, we are trying to do that, trying to find some a priori estimates. It's the y of t, if I have y of t here, so what I'm going to get, I'm going to get norm of u of t square can be estimated by the norm of u naught square, v norm of u naught square and exponential of the integral from 0 to t, okay, c1 u of tau square times norm of u of tau square d tau, okay, 
plus 2 over nu 0 to t so here now I have a of s times exponential of this so my a is this and my exponential is this so I'm going to get 0 to t 2 over nu 0 to t f of let's put it here 2 over nu 0 to t so I have f of s squared plus exponential of the integral from s to t in which I have c1 prime u of tau square times norm of u of tau square d tau. And let me remind you this norm is h norm and this norm is v norm actually. Okay. And everything ds. So this is what the estimate that we that we get. So I can say that the supremum of u of t is squared where the t sits between 0 to t can be estimated by a constant what you call k3 where k3 is what? k3 is um, k3 is what? yes by the way you have to also keep in view so, so for, for, for this u of tau square between say s to t you know our, between say 0 to t we have an estimate k1 no for this I have k1 so for, for u of tau square I mean if you remember uh, one of the equation that the supremum so supremum of u of t in h norm from 0 to t can be estimated by k2 and if I have a 0 to t the norm of this square u of t square can be estimated by k1 actually so if I estimate this guy by k1 and pull that intact you know pull that k1 out so what is going to remain is 0 to t and c1 prime as well then what is going to remain is 0 to t and u of tau square then I'm using this inequality and I can say that uh, so pulling k2 out so I'm going to remain with k1 and same is the thing that I can do with this so since this can be estimated by k2 so pull that k2 and c1 out of integral so what is going to remain is 0 to t u of tau square d tau but I can estimate this by k1 so this is going to be c1 k1 k2 and similarly I'm going to have a c1 k1 k2 so this is what that you're going to get actually so the k3 is a number and hence I can say that k3 is a number that is uh, that can be um, that depends on u naught f v and l okay and that can be explicitly written as why it is l should it be l should be t right while this k3 can be explicitly written as norm of u naught square Okay. plus uh, 2 over nu 0 to capital T f of t square dt plus c1 prime and k2 k1 k2 square actually no 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 okay. so this is k3 and k3 can be written as u naught square this would be exponential of c1 k1 k2 plus this integral 0 uh, 2 over nu plus 2 over nu 0 to t f of t square dt and everything multiplied by um, what do you say uh, exponential 
of C1, K1, K2. C1 prime, K1, K2. So this is what that you're going to get actually. Okay. So what does this mean? What does this mean? This also means, so what does this inequality? This, this shows that U basically also uniformly is uniformly bounded in V0. So, so, the, the, so, so I can say that U of T belongs to the L infinity. Okay, so, so I can say that U from this estimate, I can say that U belongs to L infinity 0 to T with V0 actually. So you get this boundedness. So what is the next thing? So we got an interesting, but you have to keep in view that this is true in only two dimension. Okay. What is the next thing? The next thing is, the next thing is, let's get back to the same equation. Point eleven. Okay. So let's for the next estimate, almost the last estimate, let's get back to, to this inequality, which is which goes like p by dp of norm of u of t square plus um, new a u of t square in h norm plus less than or equal to 2 over new f of t square plus c1 u of t square plus norm of u of t power 4 okay. so you get this so let's recall this so what I'm gonna do with okay. let's integrate it from 0 to t capital T so you're gonna get what so you're gonna get u of t square which I can estimate by k3 minus u not square plus nu of integral from 0 to t a u of t square dt okay less than or equal to we can get 2 over nu integral from 0 to t and f of t square dt plus integral from 0 to t and you have this c1 u of t square and norm of u of t power 4 and t okay so if i now use this that that the v norm of u of t square can be estimated by k3 so i can estimate this by k3 I can estimate this by k3 square and I can estimate this by what you call k1 actually. Okay. So so finally finally my integral is going to something look like this. Okay. New from 0 to t a u of t square dt okay a u of t square dt so this can be estimated by norm of u naught square plus what do you say uh, 2 over nu okay yeah I, I can i can directly write that okay this is so if, if you throw everything on other side okay to drop this term and throw everything on the other side so you're gonna get a constant k4 that k4 depends on u naught that depends on f that depends on uh, uh, same as 
nu that depends on t okay and this a4 can be explicitly written shall I write it explicitly so that you can see that so it would be equal to a4 would be equal to 1 over nu norm of u0 square plus plus what 2 over nu and 0 to t 0 to t f of t square dt plus c1 prime k1 k3 square so I hope So let's summarize what we have done so far. Okay. Let's put everything at one place. I know it's a lot of calculations, but you know, obviously it's navy socks equation actually. Okay. So the Summary of a priori estimates. Summary of a priori estimates. Shall I write this on whiteboard rather than blackboard? Then I can show it to you at many different instances at here is a priori estimates that we have got using energy inequalities. So here is a list. So zero to t norm of u of t square dt can be estimated by a constant k1 that depends on initial data f so given initial data mu and t okay so so this is a priori so if you know this you know the k1 so you know the estimate actually for u not square so this is and this is true in general this is true in n equal to 2 and 3 both dimensions actually okay so the second estimate that we kind of got was a supremum of u of t square where the t is in the interval 0 to t can be estimated by a constant k2 again k2 depends on u naught f mu and t okay in fact K2 is basically nu times K1. This is what is true in general. And then specifically in N2, we drive uh, these estimates. What are those estimates? So the first estimate that we drive that the suprema of um, suprema of uh, U of P square okay, can be estimated by K3. Okay, and K3 again depends on U naught F mu and T. Okay, I don't know why does this guy say is this. And uh, the last estimate that we got is really the integral of 0 to t a u of t square dt can be estimated by a k4 
that depends on the u naught f mu and pf. Okay, so these are the uniform estimates that you got. You can quickly also deduce that in general u is the square integrable from 0 to t in v now. So this is what that you can have a you know, conclusion about u. And uh, this also belongs to what? L infinity, okay, by this, L infinity 0 to t with values in h. Okay, so the first condition is this. So this is true in general. This is true in general. And in dimension 2, what I would like to do, what we have is that u belongs to, what do you say, L infinity of say 0 to t with values in um, with values in V, okay, and AU belongs to what do you call L2 0 to T with values in H, or you can also put um, V prime actually, yes, you can also put V prime. This is what is the case. Um, so these are the estimates, a priori estimates that we have actually. And now we are almost done actually. So we get, we are ready to attack the equation and you know do the proof of existence of the solution. We are done and we are ready to do the proof of existence actually. Um, so before watching the proof of existence, it's not really the proof, I'm going to just outline the proof actually. Okay, what you have to review quickly is to review your, um, uh, the thing that we discussed in class about the Glarican uh, approximation method actually, or the compactness method. Okay, So just uh, just recall those lemmas and the results that we proved about uh, the Glarican approximation method. Actually, okay, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna assume that you know them actually. Okay, and I'm gonna directly argue. All right. Um, there are several ways in which you can do this. Okay. So let's do the existence and the weakness as a result. Let me put it precisely in the form of a theorem, okay. which says that if you have been given a forcing factor f from L2 0 to T to V prime and and not from and u not from h then there exists a unique uh, there exists a weak solution v 
unique solution to Navier Stokes equation, okay, such that, and this is so this part is dimension independent, okay, whether you are in two dimension or you are in three dimension. For a given f and u naught, there exists a weak solution actually, okay, such that it has this regularity, such that u belongs to L2 0 to T v intersection L infinity 0 to Th, okay. 